Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Nolan Fast with the Grow Podcast. Uh, we've got Sam back again today, and we have Morgan and Linda from the feed department. And Morgan is with us from Purina, and we're going to talk uh, a lot of different subjects revolving around calves and feeding and protein. But I'm going to just send it over to Sam. Uh, why don't you lead us off? Uh, I guess, well, first off, uh, unfortunately, the last four or five weeks have been pretty dry, and what we had some pretty lush pastures that have you know, turned pretty dry. I guess we know when that feed value runs out and that, you know, stocking rate gets a little bit diminished. What are some of our options we have to help supplement those cattle, especially them cattle that are still nursing calves at side? Um, one of the top options when that grass quality goes down, um, we look at the pair or the cow and the cow calf pair together. We can put protein tubs out there and that protein will help those cattle utilize that dry grass similar to what we do in the fall when we put them out on stocks. So we do have a number of people in our territory that are starting to use protein tubs just because of the dryness in that. Um, so, and we do have, you know, we have the Prina brand available, we have the Hubbard brand available, and we do have ADM. And we are starting to run specials on them, so just to help the producers out in this dry time. Um, Another option um, that a lot of people, when it does get dry, what they will do is to creep feed, um, supplement those calves so that they have their own feed supply and they're not pulling down on the cow. It also helps reduce the utilization of the grass at that time. So you're saying, not, um, you know, get some supplement or protein source out there for the uh, cows, but, you know, maybe if they're, get some out there for the calves too, so they're eating more besides just nursing and other grass as well. Yeah, correct. So um, when creep feeding calves, you kind of look at what what's the cow's milk production like and what's the grass quality like. So we're we're bridging that gap between, um, you know, where that calf might be deficient. And then in turn, we're also helping that cow out because if those calves are eating more of those eating more of the creep feed, you know, they're not maybe pushing the milk as hard on the mother. And so then that's when we can supplement with the protein for the cows, maybe increase that body condition score for her. So, you know, she's ready when breeding comes around and she's helping that calf out inside of her and herself. And then we're also, you know, increasing the pounds um, on that calf that with the creep feed and, and getting them started um, prior to weaning. So what, what's the best way to start that weaning, weaning process? Um, some producers will, they will go three weeks to a short month, they will wean the calves, and at that time, uh, or not wean the calves, they'll put creep feeders out for the calves, and at that time we do get them used to dry feed, so that when we do wean those calves, they do know what dry feed or feed in a bunk looks like. For the producer who just cold weans is off the cow with never having fed before, we have some starter feeds that are very palatable that they can use, um, whether it be a full feed or be like a five pound rate. So we can do either or. So what, I guess, just playing off that, what can you go into a little bit more about the starter feeds? Like what options are available and or what we can use uh, for wean calves and to start feeding? Yeah. So um, we have on the Purina side of things, we have the Accuration um, starter feed. We have a pre-con complete feed. And then um, we also have a Stress Care 5 supplement. Um, and then also um, those all come with Purina's um, newest RX3 technology. So that's going to help um, the calves overall health and, you know, any weaning stress that they may have. So the RX3 um, kind of primes the calf's immune system. And so with that, we're looking to detect any um, illness three days prior to when it would originally show up. Um, mm -hmm. So that will that will definitely help in the weaning calves. And we also, you know, suggest throwing a stress tub out there um, and that can help with, you know, the calves bawling and, you know, helping their throat um, if there's any soreness there and then stimulating um, them to go find feed and water. So that can also help them help them go find feed with the stress tub. The other thing on what the stress tub does, and, and all three brands, whether it's Hubbard, Deprina, or ADM, they do have a stress tub. It is called different Hubbard's is Brigades. Um, I'm drawing a blank on ADMs, but we do have them from all for all brands. What it does is when those those calves are also a lot of times people use mineral tubs, so they're used to licking a tub, and so a stress tub they're licking it, um, so that is something that they are familiar with. So it's easy. Um, it also primes those saliva glands, and when you do that, that makes them hungry and want to eat more, so they're more quickly come up to the bunk. Well, I was gonna say like so. 
Uh, if somebody hasn't done like the the cold weaning before, like, is it like do you have to introduce them, uh, like to the bunk beforehand, or do they just kind of instinctively figure out like, okay, this is where I need to go? On the cold weaning, what normally you do is you do kind of introduce them. You put hay, you put like grass hay, brome hay in the bunk. They are used to that dry hay. They will come up and eat that. And then what a lot of guys will do is they will pour their wean feed on top of that. Okay. So they come to eat the hay, the wean feeds in the bunk, and then they start to eat the the um, wean feed on top of the hay as, while they're eating it that way. So basically sneaking a pill into like your dog's treat sort yep. of thing okay yep, type of thing yeah and if you're a dry lot like i do they just are sit there and yelling at you waiting for the feed <laughs> anyways so right <laughs> so they figure it out pretty quick <laughs> yeah they kind of know what's going on um and i guess i guess that's another option too with the the you know pasture running low i guess you can look at weaning a little early have you had talked about many producers that are maybe going to wean a little bit earlier than they normally do with some of the grass uh, quality running down, or is it, you're not hearing that as much? No, we are. We probably have a number of producers. I would say maybe 20% that have weaned early are ready just because of the grass quality that's went down, and so they've decided or will be weaning in the next couple of weeks that way. Um, something else to check out, um, make sure you talk to your location or your feed sales rep. We do um, run specials on weaning feeds, so... Um, we're going to help you. Um, if you book that feed, we'll get, get a better price for you than if you just come in and buy it that way. So we are running specials right now on all of our weaning feeds. And I know you said earlier uh, you are talking about the tubs. There's a tub special out right now. What's the mineral special? I know that because the feed, my feed guy came and saw me. But is that for just for this fall, or do some of those specials you know start running now if you buy them, or when does that special start? In the end, kind of. Yeah, so we do have our um, tub booking out, and that will be, um, you can book now through November. Mm-hmm. And so then um, we have tubs. We have a couple minerals that we also included on there. Um, so, yeah, like your protein tubs, um, minerals. We have a cre- um, some fall creep for guys who are creep feeding their fall calves. Um, and then you'll be able to pull that through through March. So you can book it now and then pull it all the way until March. Okay, so if I book it now and then I picked it up next week, you'd, I'd get it at the booking price and then right, right now through Correct. November to do that? Right, and okay. you can, you know, even if you book now and you, you pick something up in February, that would still be on the booking price. Okay, all right, that is good. Uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, we talked about this on an earlier podcast when you were in here. Um, fly control, they're still bad. <laughs> um, they're still out there. What Pink eye is still prevalent. Uh, so I just wanted to touch on that a little bit too, and I guess give you the option to speak on that. I know we need to probably treat until it freezes, but right. I didn't know. If um, you know, yeah, we still have flies out there. Um, I think you know some people have made a comment. They think the flies are uh, the numbers they're seeing on them are worse than what they were earlier. Um, Some of that, I think, has helped to the rain. It's given, you know, flies a little more um, stuff to hatch or with the dry weather they're hatching. But, yeah, we need to feed um, our fly control through our first hard freeze. Um, The reason for that being is that we still kill those larvae, and those larvae can sit in that manure for months before they hatch. Before they come back. Before they hatch. So so it is always good to um, to, um, keep doing that. I would say on the pink eye, I think that has slowed down from when we were here before. Um, not that we're still not having some of it, but it's not quite running as rampant as what it was. But, um, you know, if we can control our flies, um, that just helps that way too. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I've had some pink eye, pink eye I've still treated, but it hasn't been as many. It's just been mm-hmm. less. Um, I was going to shift a little bit uh by the time we probably do a, f- a feed podcast again they'll have a lot of cows on stocks um just maybe touch on some of the better supplement strategies for cattle on stocks whether you need to do that or you know what you kind of should be looking on there to keep condition before calving for a lot of guys who calve in the spring yeah so we have our um, 25 all natural and our 3013 protein tubs um that will be available and those are also on the booking um for some guys maybe they just want an all natural tub 
so they'd go with the 25. Um, for the 3013 tubs, there's going to be um, some urea in there, so it's going to help those cows better utilize um, the stocks and um, energy from that. So, you know, when we're looking at which which one, you know, if you're if you're an all natural type of person, then then that's what you'll go with. But then we also have the 3013 tubs um, that we also will recommend. The other thing with tubs out on stocks, if you do feel when you wean your calves that you've got cows that are maybe not in quite as good as condition as you hoped in that, the best time to put weight back on the cows is right after you wean them. Um, a lot of that weight is not going to, or that energy that you're putting into them is not going to go towards the um, calf because we're still in the second trimester. Most of the, the growth of the fetus is in the third trimester. So if we really want to push them. So some guys will, while they're still in grass and before they get to stocks, we'll put protein tubs out there because that additional protein will help them turn that dry grass into energy and we can put weight on them faster um, at this early age versus early stages versus waiting till the last trimester, putting all this feed into them and then making that fetus bigger and, and potentially causing calving issues. Even, you know, doing some of that supplementation after wean so that the cow kind of focuses on itself for yep. a little bit? Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh. So I think uh, we should probably let people know. So Morgan, you work for Purina, but you also kind of work for us. Yes. How's that work? What's uh, like? What's your job title? Like, give so us some background. So I am a livestock production specialist that focuses in, on beef and mainly cow calf. Um, so yes, I'm employed through Purina, but my time is spent at the co-op. So anytime I order feed or you know I'm out making a sales call. All the products come from, you know, the the most local location for, you know, that producer. So whether it's Hanover or Fairbury, um, so it kind of just is depending in the area. But yes, all of the feed that I sell comes out of the co-op. So I'm okay. a Purina employee that works for the co-op. For the co-op. So I consider myself both. Basically a co-op employee. Yep. <laughs> yep. That just happens to wear a Purina shirt. Yes, but I also have co-op shirts too that I wear. <laughs> <laughs> so not just Purina. So the uh, the... The products that we're talking about, um, is there like a website that we can link to from myfarmerscoop.com where they could like look through some of these options? Yeah. Maybe before they call and get some more information. Yeah, sure. So Purina has um, a website. It's called purinamills.com, and they have you know they just they have all the product lines and they have a whole bunch of education that you can go if you're you know looking for late summer protein supplementation. You can go search that on PurinaMills.com and they'll have like a Let's see what's available. Yep, a little article about it. Um, and then you can also click on the beef icon and it'll bring up, you know, cow calf, weaned calf, um, replacement heifers. And so there's different um, little icons that you can click on to learn more about the products that maybe fit under each one of those. So yeah, we can definitely link that and that's some um, that's a useful tool, I guess, for producers to use if they are wanting more information. All right. Uh, back to when you were talking about the starter feeds and like, you know, fresh wean feeds, how long do you feed those? You know, do, do you feed those for so long and then you can kind of get into a different ration of dry grains and things like that? Or do you need to stay on those type of starter rations or what do you Majority of the people um, stay on a starter feed, um, depending what type of starter feed they go with. Um if it is a complete feed, uh, and some people put it in a self-feeder, they will stay on that feed for about 20 to 28 days, depending on it. Um, and part of that is is a lot of it has um, coccidiosis control, and so we need a 28-day control on that. Um, if they are using a um, five-pound feeding rate, um, they feed that five pound for somewhere between 10 to 14 days. But by day seven, if those calves are eating and they're wanting more, seven to 10, they can start incorporating their own grain mix into it. So, um, but then again, if they're feeding for coccidiosis, we need to feed that for, um, we need to feed a coccidi stat in the feed for 28 days. So, so like I said, somewhere, you know, 28 days is probably the max they feed. Some of them, um, you know, will kind of start it and go to about 14 days. So it kind of just depends on the operation and how they're feeding it. And then you can transition to some other feed options after that. Right. However you want to, for however long you plan to feed them, whether it's mm-hmm. 
just background them or feeding them all the way out. Right. And there are some people that want to get them used to, um, like backgrounders and that, that want to get them used to their current ration. So we supply a supplement, which is just like a one pound feeding rate. And they start from day one mixing in with their grain and their hay that way. So like I said, we have, we can pretty much design the starter program according to what you are doing at home with your own feedstuffs. Morgan, Linda, thanks for coming in. We appreciate your time. Sam, we appreciate you coming in as always. Uh, if anybody has any questions, wants to learn more, hit up myfarmerscoop.com, click on feed, and the Purina link will be there. There's some more information there. Uh, it, leave us a review. Let us know what you think. Uh, let us know what you want to hear about next. You can always find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, you can find, find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and LinkedIn. And as always, keep growing.